Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, this is, is about success stories in this session. And uh, we are talking not only about success stories, but also about an advertising for tomorrow's interactive uh, lectures. As you may know, tomorrow on day two, in the afternoon, uh, and also before lunch, there will be so-called interactive lectures. The idea is to show you from uh, the success stories what has uh, worked well and also to give you some practical um, things on your way. So if you are yourself want to um, do some practical follow-up work to what you have seen, you'll get some data or some uh, practical artifacts. About the background, uh, I, have, I lead a Christian Doppler research lab at the TU Vienna and uh, this uh, work now goes over five years. We work together with our company partner Logicals. Logicals is also an automation ML uh, member like TU Wien since this year. Also TU Wien since this year, automation ML and uh, Logicals is a much, much longer member. And we are interested in understanding how can we use automation ML uh, not in the sense of data exchange but automation ML models to represent plants. Let me give you the background from last year. Mr. Heidel uh, brought an overview how automation ML is used now. You have lots of uh, tools with different data and you send around lots of automation ML files. And one problem that you have with this is that you cannot compare these files to each other. You don't know whether the files actually are consistent. You don't have an overview. You don't have uh, an interface to query what's going on here. And if you want to support with the data processes in engineering or business process like here, these people have no access to an, an overview on what's going on in the engineering department in the project. And uh, one idea was to provide a kind of a central automation ML storage and an automation ML hub as a hub uh, connecting the different tools, but also the tools to the business and uh, project levels. And uh, we realized the concept of the automation ML hub and uh, we want to show you a few advantages that we get from uh, working with automation ML models rather than with automation ML files. And for this, tomorrow we have, we have three lectures on day two. It's starting after lunch. It's a bit challenging after lunch at 1300. We start with round trip engineering with automation ML projects. The idea is here that we have data received from the University of Magdeburg about the standard examples uh, where a plant planner uh, defines the structure of a plant, then a mechanical engineer provides mechanical data, then an electrical engineer electrical data, and a PLC engineer uses all this data to make some changes, and then in the round trip, uh, uh, if somebody else changes the data, it's important to see, okay, what has changed and who is affected, and you want to see this not on the level of the files, of the XML files, because that's not so interesting, but you want to know this on the level of the automation ML model. So in the sense of the plant, which part of the plant has changed? Is it something that is interesting to a certain person? And so on. And this will be discussed tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, and uh, the second talk is about automation ML models for modelers and software developers. Here we will provide you with information on how you can yourself make uh, tools in a model-based software engineering ways that use automation ML. And uh, here, you see these shortens here, one is uh, Eclipse Modeling Framework. This is an open source initiative and the Enterprise Architect, which is a widely used uh, modeling software modeling tools. And it will be shown for both uh, sides how this can be used. Uh, and it's, uh, um, it was amazing to us in how short time you can make interesting tools once you have a meta model, for example, for automation ML. And last but not least, we have the third uh, success story about the Automation ML Analyzer. It's about flexible navigation and querying of Automation ML models. And here the background is that um, 
if we want to support an engineering process, today what we use is mostly structured data that is available in tools within the organization. But much of the data is also available externally. So the question is how can you link external data so uh, you can use it to automate um, the uh, engineering processes with external data, for example from tool providers, technical leaflets and so on. And here linked data is one possible answer and this will be explored in the context of semantic web tools. Just to provide you a, a little bit with an overview here. For the hub, uh, we will show version storage for automation ML models. So you are here on the left, the uh, different uh, engineering domain experts and the tool data. And we will show how to import this into an ML hub and how to uh, see versioned uh, models and also changes between the model versions. What is also important is that you can manage the integrated uh, plant model with plugins from, for certain functions because we found out that uh, many of uh, our clients need functions like identity or finding uh, similar uh, but not uh, the same uh, objects and uh, they always do it in a different way so it's not possible to find a solution that fits for everybody but you can uh, use functions that can be uh, implemented uh, for each of the uh, clients as they need it. What's also interesting is that the engineering views that are here can be uh, propagated changes between the uh, engineering views, so you see the facets, we saw this before with the, what was it, the tetraeder, about uh, three faces, and here we also have three faces, but it looks a little like a screw, so uh, the same idea, and uh, what is uh, an, a nice feature is that you can notify, for example, a, a, a partner engineer if uh, a change by an engineer overlaps with some of the facets they, they both uh, use, and therefore could be interesting for the partner engineer. The second part, this is uh, a user interface that was uh, made in a model-based software engineering view. And here you can see automation ML in, in very different uh, mm -hmm. representations. You can see it in a graph way, you can see a meta model, you can see it in textual uh, ways, and you can really um, consider for which uh, representation, for which client you need which presentation. A representation of automation ML and you can transform between these uh, presentations as you like and if you use a model based soft engineering approach like it will be shown tomorrow this can be done can be done with the right expertise in a few days uh, and uh, therefore it's possible to quickly build uh, the tools that you need at least at first prototypes to see in which direction you want to continue What is also explored in this session is the, uh, the transformation between automation ML, SysML, uh, UML, and UML, because these families of languages are used in many contexts, but currently it's not clear how to map them together, and uh, this will also be discussed in the tomorrow session. And last but not least, the automation ML uh, analyzer shows how automation ML data can be transformed into linked data. Why is linked data important? Uh, as you may know, in the, in the web, uh, is a semantic web, uh, linked data is used to represent semantics on the World Wide Web. And uh, the same uh, representation can be used also for automation ML or engineering data. And if you have this, you can e more easily link uh, external data to automate engineering processes. Okay, that's it. So uh, please consider tomorrow afternoon to join uh, one or all of these sessions uh, because uh, as we saw in the morning, uh, data exchange is the foundation that automation ML provides. But the real application power comes from viewing automation ML as, as models. Thank you. <coughs>